guy had, like offered um, you know, a large sum of money on the via like you know at DMs, and he said, uh, "What's his reply?" He says, "This is how much you'd make if you'd respond to my DM." <laughs> and I was like, "No, nah, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm good." family I've got a quick one that I want to tell you about as you know I'm also a person who likes working hard for my money and finding new ways of diversifying my income so I've discovered this new platform called pocket broker which is another way to diversify your income pocket broker is a trading option that you can trade just with your phone pocket broker is so so easy to use I'm new to trading you're possibly new to trading so you want something that is easy that you can just click on a link and the link will tell you everything to do within 10 20 30 seconds you can register follow the registration process you can earn your first profit and if you use my promo code the one that's on the screen or the word engineer when you're registering and signing up on pocket broker you get to earn 100 percent back of your earnings completely so be like me learn how to trade with pocket broker because it's easy it's simple it's on your device on the mobile app and you can make extra money for that extra little dream that you're trying to accomplish so it's vanello vanelle vanelle yeah. what does it mean so my my grandmother like you know she she don't want any more boys so okay. I'm a fan of Banele. Okay, okay. Banele. I get that. Why couldn't you just be Banele then? Nah, because like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, She's no. trying to be edgy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah nah, she is, she is, she is. Greetings, my brother. Greetings, my brother. Uh, welcome to Engineer Your Life. Firstly, I'd like to, on camera, apologize. We've postponed a few times. Nah, it's all good. Jeez, <laughs> um, I've been on sites. I've yeah. been traveling. I've been out of the province. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah, it's, it's happening. Yeah, it's funny, uh, I yeah, guess man. the timing was good. <laughs> it was, it was perfectly. Icebreaker questions. Yes. Three people um, that you believe in life have reached their highest potentials, and why do you think they have? Three people. First one. Okay, I'll say even if they're dead, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll say Alan Watts for one. Okay. Um, Bob Proctor. Why the first one? Okay, Alan Watts. They're all in the same field. Look, okay. literally, it's about mind and like over what really is in reality so sure. they they practice like you know spirituality in such mm -hmm. a sense that like you know it's it's divine power sure so yeah second but proctor same Bob proctor line yeah. inspiring because like yeah. they they really help people navigate around these situations in mm -hmm. life whether it be hard whether it be difficult they teach you that the mind like actually carves out whatever out of life someone out there doesn't know who bob proctor is like mm. what is he famous for perhaps what's the most <clears throat> perhaps his biggest achievement or his biggest mission that he did well besides helping a magnitude of people like mm -hmm. s successfully attain things in a in the mental plane and help them regulate what being a human is all about yeah um he's definitely known for like yo i can't even it's hard to explain it's like sure. it's one of those things where these are like our gurus mm -hmm. in, ter in terms of like you know focus on mind then everything else falls into place like yeah. correspondence masters yeah, yeah yeah third person third person i'd have to give it to maybe an actor an Idris. actor yeah which one idris alba idris alba yeah. interesting <laughs> yeah uh, i see why you would say that <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> your height yeah. um your posture yeah. you're a guy who gyms you're a guy who's, yeah. who's in the media space yeah. so there's a there's perhaps a lot of inspiration that you mm. can can squeeze out of him yeah most definitely, most definitely, out of Idris Shalva. And, you know, I like the way he articulates. And, like, sure. You know, yeah, he gives, like, that gentleman aesthetic. I get you. Why, yeah. why do you think he's reached his highest potential, though? To be quite honest, like, for me, mm -hmm. in my opinion, I'd say, I don't know, man. Like, it's, we never know the works that go behind, like, the actors. That's just, like, it's, yeah, it's a yeah. question for them more than anything. But, like, I like what he puts out into the world for you. us to see. I get you. Yeah. What mission is Vanelle Jareed on? What mission? Mm -hmm. Most definitely chasing success. Okay. 
and but I'm patient with it. I'm okay. learning that like things don't happen overnight. I'm so, learning that things take time. This background work you need to do, foundation that like you need to work on. That's why if I'm going to be in the media space, I told myself like, as you can see, a lot of people chase relevancy to the point where I need to post, I need to post, I need to post. If you don't have anything that's going on, it's okay to just sit back and have a day off. Would you say that the patience factor, mm. the patient fruit of the spirit mm. in, in your character yes. has been honed by the fact that here you are as an unknown person living your normal life. Mm. You get plunged into reality television on mm. Big Brother Mzanzi. You come out of the house mm. and there is an expectation of fame that comes with mm. it. But also you've realized in your own personal journey mm. that amongst the people that you were in the house with, your journeys are still so different mm. after you've left the house. I mean, there are people without disrespecting anyone who've become overnight successes yeah. after they've left the house. Mm. And you are realizing that in my journey, that's not what God is doing in my yeah. journey where everything just came and yeah, came and came, came and hundreds of thousands of followers, which is really yeah. what has happened yeah. for other people. Yeah. And you can't question God for that happening in yeah, their yeah. journeys. You, you need to be content with your own. Most, most definitely. That's like, <clears throat> that was the biggest thing that actually dawned on me. I was like, bro, like you don't need to force yourself to do things that like, cause like a lot of them, like, you know, I can say like, we really are in different journeys, as you said. And it, it took a, a moment to realize that like, nah, I'd rather do the background work because if you're going to fight for relevance, you'll be a slut for attention. <laughs> So you'll do anything just to stay on the charts, sure. just to, you know, be you. You even neglect your dignity and like, mm -hmm. you know, the things that you solely, you know, are hold dear sentiment to. Yeah, yeah. You'll yeah. do a lot for attention. So that's why I realized that like, nah, I'm not willing to go about about it that way. Mm -hmm. I'd rather people, I'd rather have people see my works. Interesting you say you're not willing to go about <clears throat> it that way. Yeah. Um, Maybe there's a viewer out there who's naive. We are in Johannesburg. Yeah. I'm sure multiple opportunities have been presented yeah. for you to you use the S word <laughs> to be able to get access into mm. an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Has there been? My brother, this industry <laughs> is so insane. Yes, there have been multiple times, but yeah. that's where I told you, I tell you like, you need a, <laughs> it's really like, my, my, my mentor used to say this one thing all the time because I used to love shortcuts more than anything in the office space. So what he said was like, you know, BS can get you to the top, mm -hmm. but it won't keep you there. <laughs> so it is always a thing of like, build a foundation that's solid. Don't take any of like those favors because you'll do a lot of those. Sure, sure. Until sure. you you lose yourself entirely. Yeah, yeah. It's it becomes favor after favor. favor. Um, it starts off as a lunch. Yeah. And then it progresses into your home. Your home. And then you get sent money in your bank account. Yeah. And then it's okay. We'll get you a gig. Mm. You do do the gig mm. and then you get asked two weeks later, but did you think that gig was free? Mm. 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 <laughs> mm. You see, you know what I'm saying? Like this industry is like, it's different, bro. It's like, even when I got to start hanging with like celebrities, I started realizing that like, yo, why do people look up to these guys so much? Because if you knew like, you know, like... How empty they are. Bro. Or like, there's another side to celebrities like, or like fame that like, you know, if you're a godly person, you're like, nah, that's not for me, bro. Sure. That's not for me. Like, you can step away and, like, do it the right way. Even if it takes time, I'm good. Hey, family, thank you so much for being loyal to Engineering Your Life. I know that if you're watching this, you're probably here for the second time or the third time. And please, if you're here for the second, third time, please may you kindly subscribe. Because if you subscribe, it helps us to get better conversation, get better guests, and get access to creating the best content that we can for you. So please don't forget to subscribe and make sure you continue watching this episode. Do you ever find yourself battling with Jareed, who's building a, a, a strong personal brand, mm. and Jareed, the rooted man, who has to say no to a lot of opportunities because he needs to remain true to his rooted principles? Mm. Um, because as you're saying... There's a lot of events you must say no to. They are. That people think it's the opposite way. You must actually say yes to yeah, everything. No. no. The, you must say no more than you say, say yes. yes. That is actually... Hey, my brother, you're actually reading me. <laughs> but that's actually a thing, yes. It, there's a challenge between like, you know... Because you also like... In this space, I realized that like it's not a... Your, your means of like money depend on how hard you're working on that month. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. paid via like media kit. So sure. you get paid via like, you know, the work you put in. So, sure. so 
plenty of times you'd have to say no to something mm-hmm. simply because it it goes goes against like your values and yeah, stuff like that yeah, but yeah. other than that you just have to keep it stepping i guess <laughs> you know like you just have to take or say the no and you pray for the next opportunity and so, it surely does come so, like funny so. enough once you say no to something best believe that's not the end of whatever you think you're working towards trust me something big is coming it just takes a little bit of time uh i i i i've been it's been in my heart for for the past few weeks that mm. there is absolutely nothing that's meant for you that will miss you exactly that it's it was never yours in the first place if you feel like you're toiling mm. if you feel like you're losing yourself if you feel like your authenticity is gone mm. as you seek an opportunity yeah you might get it mm. you might get it but all of you would have been lost sure. to get that opportunity and as you're saying to stay on top after getting it in that manner mm. good luck good luck that's all i'm going to yeah, say yeah that's really it like it's like good luck yeah cuz you you can only do favors for so long mm. And then what next? Because like there's going to be another individual that can replace you easily. Mm, mm. But if you really ground it in that foundation and you have like the, the best practice, I mean, you're, you become undeniable so, at some point. So, so. back to Mfanele before there was a charid. Yes. Um, you grew up in Joburg? I did. Uh, through and through. Through and through, yeah. So where does the accent come from? I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you. <laughs> so my granddad, he's he's... He's big on literature. He's okay. like, yeah, like Peter. And so much so, he loves Shakespeare so much so that he named my dad Hamlet. So, like, every time we'd go over there, like, it was it was a must that was for you to read a newspaper every mm-hmm. Sunday. And he'd help you pronounce words in such a like, certain way. So, mm-hmm. like, over time, your accent just gradually grows around that yeah yeah the pronunciation we watch westerns we'd emulate characters on tv yeah so yeah. like it just comes from that do you think he because of the times he was growing up in mm. he realized that assimilating to whiteness helped you succeed faster in life mm. so that's what he was actually trying to teach mm. you guys it did and more than anything i know a lot of black people don't want to like you know black people always stand that mentality that like nah i want to be black or black or whatever case may be i'm trying to tell them that like you don't you can still be black, but new generation black in terms of like, you know, like it, it isn't wrong to be well articulate by far. It isn't wrong to, to you know, gradually pick up different routines instead of good to your ploma and do like the usual black people things on a Sunday, so your posa mm. or whatever. You don't have to do that. You mm. can go out on a Sunday and have like, you know, boat rides with like people. Or what, that's what the family has been carved into. Sure. My cousins play violin instead of like, you know, they do like we did everything different in our family for us to be you know who you are aren't you saying that from a point of privilege though because there's a certain level of affordability to be able to have those hobbies and i'll say what privilege because my parents put themselves in debt for us to go to the best schools for Mm. us to do like you know it's it's a it's a willingness to to sacrifice i hear you and see and like our parents bet on us in so many ways that like were so surprising mm, because mm, you know mm. the financial situation at home is not okay. Mm. But at school, you have to act like everything's okay because mm. like no one knows that what's going on at home. Yeah, yeah. No one really knows. So also you play that part so well, so much so that like you gradually become it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fake that, it till you make it. Exactly. <laughs> that. That's why I tell you like I look up to like Alan Watts and Bob Proctor because yeah. once you act in something and so much, so many like you become that, it, it just becomes you. You're, you're 13, 14, which is uh, early teenagehood, yeah. which are formative years. Yeah. And you have this identity where at home, you know that you guys don't really have much. You have mm. lower middle class parents who mm. are putting food on the table, paying your school fees, getting into debt. Mm. But at school, you are in this private institute, private schooling, mm. where the you have to look affluent and you have to speak a certain mm. way and you have to present a certain way, yeah. get good grades, play sport. Doesn't this cause an identity crisis in your teenagehood where you're like, who am I truly? You have crazy questions, which are good, <laughs> which are good. It did. It did. And I noticed it because plenty of times I'd be in conflict with my parents. Simply because of where I'd go back home, the kids are different towards the ones at, like, at school. Mm. So at at home, like you, you know, like you play around with kids or whatever case may be. Some get you, some may not. But you gradually, I only gravitated toward like two of them who actually understood because we were in the same situation where our okay. parents took us to schools in which we understood like yeah a situation at school we play that part when you get back home we also like 
you know, learn to tone it time. down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it does, it, it does play a, a huge identity crisis. Plenty of times I got in trouble at school. Plenty of times. For what sort of things? Like, what are you getting into trouble for? Well, I've always been a disruptive individual, like you know, because <laughs> I always. Yeah. <laughs> so plenty of parents meeting. Sometimes it was great. Won't even lie to you. Like I wasn't funny enough. Like when when it was high school times, mm-hmm. I wasn't really focused on academics like that. It mm-hmm. wasn't my my go to. Not even sports. And I just, it was about figuring it out mm-hmm. so much so that I realized that like, I like making people laugh. I make, I like, you know, making jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You were yeah. the class clown. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I own that. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it is interesting because um, a lot of our identity is formed in high school mm. and uh, we end up dating weird adults because they keep on saying I have childhood traumas, I have childhood mm. traumas. Um would you say who you are now is a lot of what you went through when you were in high school? Most definitely. I would say it. most of the counterparts of who I am mm. definitely stem from like my experience within high school. Are you having to unlearn a lot <clears throat> by from the things that you were when you were in high school to in order to become a better person? Or you you actually happy that you went through that dichotomy of going mm. home to a home that's humble and going to a private schooling situation? Mm. To be quite honest, I'm happy. I wouldn't change a single thing, my brother. Like mm-hmm. every experience served its time and a purpose there simply because like it gradually, it made me who I am in so many ways. In so many ways I can't express. Yeah. 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 Who do you pray to? Pray to God, Jehovah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, the reason I ask this yeah. is, <clears throat> as we become older, I yeah. mean, you only in your mid twenties. Yeah. I mean, geez, not as old as I am. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even that old. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, spirituality all of a sudden becomes an important mm-hmm. aspect to who we are. Yeah. Um, what does God mean to you, and how do you cultivate your relationship with God? Oh, see, I'll tell you a story first. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So, like, we all through, been through, like, that bandwagon of, like, giving up. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, like, nah, you know what? Jesus ain't working for me. Let me sure. just do my own thing. Sure. I had that moment at 16. Okay. And then my mom left me on the highway. She's like, nah, if you're not going to believe in Jesus, get out. Get out the car. <laughs> and I was like, are you serious right now? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. And she, was, she wasn't playing. Yeah. She literally let me go get off the, on the highway. What cars were, like, speeding by. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, if... When you, you you can only come back home if you know like the word. So sure. so like she drove off. I watched her drove off, drive. Off. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. That was my reckoning with God. Like okay. that was my day to find Him. Yeah, that was yeah, that day. Cause, yeah, like, I remember. I was like, Nah, it's not working for me. Like, let me, let me just ne- neglect this. Like, if you really real, show me a sign. Mm. And then I remember so far, like I was so far into town or something like that. But like, I was I wasn't scared. Mm-hmm. I was alone. It was like mid. Like it's, it's it's almost close to like dark, okay. around about six. Yeah. So I'm walking through town, but you know what town is like CBD mm-hmm. it gets crazy. Now everybody like when I'm walking, people are getting robbed there. Yeah, there's a situation where people are getting robbed. There's a situation where like I don't feel fear though. There's like this, the spirit that just like weighs onto you and it's like, nah, just like gradually go back. So I walked all the way from town back to school. Mm-hmm. And when I got to school, I was a security guard to call my dad. My dad came, picked me up, took me back home. <clears throat> when I get home, the argument is like, so what What do you decide? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like after yeah. that experience I just had in yeah, town, yeah. I was like, nah, he's real for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because I remained protected. Mm, like yeah, throughout, yeah. like it was the craziest things that were happening around. It's like, and it was like, I'll walk you through this. You just need to, you know. And then I went through that. And then I realized that like, nah, for sure, he's real. And then when I got back home, um, so the practice I've ever have I've had ever since that day, I talk to God like we talking right now. I could just be in the car and just like have conversations with him. like he's more like a friend to me. I pray every, each and every single day. I could even when I I did have like my wildest moments where you go out partying or whatever case, I'd never forget to pray. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I keep a good routine, solid reading Bibles every day. Like and I read it first for verse. Why do you, I mean, I know your moment of awakening, as you're saying, was at 16. But why have you been consistent? Because a lot of us fall in our journey with Christ. Mm. Um, We try, we hear people's opinions, we feel like we're not good enough. We feel like 
our decisions are bad, that I did this, that I did that, maybe God won't mm. accept me. What keeps you feeling like I am still one with God? It's my experience in life. Okay. Because each and every day, <clears throat> I look at the moments. I've, I've accomplished a lot in like the last past four years. So you gradually go from going to a college in town, Jeppy College. I don't know. It's like one of the messiest colleges mm-hmm. you could ever go to. Then the next year, you end an institution and in like, you know, a private institution in Midrand. That's the next year. Mm-hmm. Still working at a pick and pay. The next year, you end the best consulting for, like, firm in, like, you know, in the country. So mm-hmm. it's, it's gradually what I see the works. I started understanding that so, like, these are the, the works. works. Yeah. Like, you just need to stay. Your situation, your season, that's just a season. Mm. You need to understand that like, there's something I need to learn here. Even if you, I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but even if you gradually lose everything just like that mm. and go back to living back at your parents' house, there's something you need to learn. Calm down. Don't force situation because you might force yourself into a situation that's further more than what God was trying to tell you. Mm. Understand, relax, and base yourself with that season in that moment. And then you gradually start to see the works. He gives you, I don't know, like it's, it's not, a, he gives you that freeway. You have, you have leeway to do whatever you want. If you listen, you can get out of it. But if you don't, you spiral out of control. It's one of those. Jareed, once again, you're speaking from a point of privilege. You don't know how hard I've gone through. You don't know what I'm going through. I don't have food. Mm. I don't have anything. This home you're speaking of, I don't even have a home to go back to Mm. because my parents are no longer alive. Why should I keep holding on? Why should should you keep holding on? To be be quite honest, I mean, you're really down bad. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's not going to change anything. You're really at rock bottom. Yeah. You might as well just make God your rock and see how far it takes you. Because, like, nothing's going to change. As much as you said, like, as much as people, like, I I feel like, as you say, like, these questions might come, like, you might, like, people might think it's privilege or whatever case may be. But also, in reading the works, sometimes my blessings don't even come from me. It's because of the, the groundworks my parents did. Simply because in prayer or whatever case may be. God is a generational God. Mm, 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 mm. That's why when he punishes someone, he doesn't punish you entirely. He punishes the next to come. So that's why you gradually need to move carefully and do the right thing. You mentioned working at a supermarket. <clears throat> right yeah. now, you are. Uh, uh, you can dispute. Right now, you're a celebrity. Yeah. From working at a supermarket, which yeah. is a, a humble job that many South Africans do, mm. to being in the spotlight... Um, those two different people, those two different jarees, explain them to me. Those two different jarees. I'll tell you why I needed to work at the supermarket. Hmm. I was shy. I couldn't speak to people or resonate with a lot of things, you know. But when you're working in a retail or customer service job, you always yeah. got to open your mouth, sell something, try to convince, yeah. try to organizational skills. I was also messy. There's certain things I had to learn and pick and pay in the shop right to, to gradually become this. Organizational skills, I learned them there. How to communicate. I learned them there. Even like my auntie did this thing in the, in the holidays where I'd go back to her and then we'd sell juice on the street. Like, yeah. And the marketing strategy was simple. You pick out the pick and pay newspaper. You tell them it's 30 a pick and pay, but it's 10 rand here. Hmm. What do you decide? So you learn how to gradually I get you. negotiate. Yeah, that's where yeah. everything, you. that's what I'm saying. Every season is for learning. Sure. Where you lack Understand your situation, look around as to what's going on. And then whatever God throws you into, trust me, you're learning something there. Then, next level. Yeah, it's as yeah. simple as that. I don't yeah. know why people move around like crazy or there's no need for that. But I've seen my, my, my favorite influencer on TikTok <clears throat> getting 1 million followers in two months. Why are you telling me I must work at Pick and Pay first to learn skills? I see them. They look like they're doing well. They look like they're driving a nice car. They're living in a fancy apartment in mm. Waterfall in Sanson. Why are you insisting that my journey must go through a Pick and Pay or my journey must be at a till or as a cashier or at a call center? Mm. Jerry, why are you looking down on me? My dreams are bigger than that. See, that's the thing. I don't look down on you. You don't know the groundworks that that person put in to be in that space. Mm-hmm. So if you're not that person, detach yourself from what they're working towards. Hmm. Let them be. Let them gradually, because they went through some things that probably helped them become that. That was their calling. To maybe God forced them in a situation of like, okay, content is how you're going to make money. Yeah. Let me just gradually gravitate towards that. And then they gradually learn the skill. Sure. But if you, that's why I say in life, 
you're called to do whatever you're called to do on your own. It is your, it is your part and understanding to actually find exactly what it is that you need to do. Because mm. that's the problem with like, we look up to so many people and try to emulate this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, that we, we're not learning who we are or what we want for ourselves. That's why we go back to relevancy. When yeah. I saw what everybody was doing, I was like, no, okay, I see it. I'm grateful, but that's not me. <clears throat> Since we're there, yeah. um, I'm going to push you a bit. No, please. Do you have anything you regret that you did on international television? Because the whole of Africa was watching you on Big Brother mm. Zanzi. Um, are there any decisions that you took that you wish, oof, no, that's complete mess and that was out of character? Mm. I'd say, mm. to be going honest, I dealt with like, I'd say, I'll tell you what I regretted when I got out. Okay. But now not so much because like mm-hmm. I've accepted, like, you know, saying that was sure. gradually my, my, what I did, I did it. And so one thing I'd say is, uh, mm. I don't know, it's like, uh, I'd say the, 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 the poly that everybody speaks about. Mm-hmm. But, um, so to be clear, because yeah. it's not everybody who watches this who's watched Big Brother yeah. Mzansi, you were in a polyamorous relationship yeah. on the television yeah. show with two or more women. Yeah. <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But Why do you regret it? Because polyamory is not necessarily wrong. It isn't wrong. That's what I'm saying. But like, mm-hmm. it has a misconception as to what people looked at. Okay. Because like, as, as far as I'm concerned, women are so sensitive about like how you play the game and the magnitude were the ones who were watching the game. They mm-hmm. loved the first few days or like, uh, weeks in which it was wholesome because like women love love so okay. much. That's yeah, what yeah. they no, absolutely. They gravitate towards. So, so like due to the experiences and what they go through, I must have been like a triggering factor for okay. them to watch. Okay. So maybe that's when I realized that, like, okay, maybe that's where I went wrong to, to trigger, like, the masses of the, you know, the majority. The ladies that were yeah. watching. And because even now, like, there's such a misconception of me when I get out, like, got out the house. This, because I remember, like, uh, Lawrence Malaka said, like, South African women can't wait to put their hands on you. <laughs> and for me, it was like, oh, I'm so I'm afraid. Object. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm so, yeah. Yeah, like, I was, I thought, like, they, they meant, he meant, like, the hate or whatever case oh, may be. Yeah, okay. the hate. But when I got outside, it was quite different because like mm-hmm. women actually gravitate towards me and they like me. But like the only difference is they don't like you for who you are. They like you for like maybe sexual advances, sure. favors and, you know, stuff like that. So no one really tries to get to know the man. Perhaps because of how it was heightened, yeah. the, the amount of screen time you got yeah. in this polyamorous relationship. Yeah. Everybody per- perceives you as this person who just wants to have sex all the time yeah. and possibly you can give it to them. Yeah, which they so wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, they so wrong because like outside here, like in there, I put up content. I became the most controversial, like controversial, like being. That was the whole game. When I even did my interview, I told them like, Yo, I'm gonna make a mess of every situation. So watch out for me. And I did exactly that because no yeah. one has played that game like I, how I have. Yeah, and yeah. it's always gonna be like that's why I, like when when we think about regrets. When I think about it, it's like I can't apologize for the triggering part. But I don't regret how I played the game. Okay. Understand that. Yeah, yeah. There's you know, a difference. There's a big difference. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's content. You watched it. I kept you guys up at night. That's what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? Like, also, when I also left the house, when I when I got onto socials, like it was like, ah, stuff is boring, whatever case may be. You, you, people don't know what they want from you. Sure, sure. So that's why sure, you can sure, never sure. live to please people. Hey, family, thank you so much for being loyal to Engineering Your Life. I know that if you're watching this, you're probably here for the second time or the third time. And please, if you're here for the second, third time, please may you kindly subscribe. Because if you subscribe, it helps us to get better conversation, get better guests, and get access to creating the best content that we can for you. So please don't forget to subscribe and make sure you continue watching this episode. But don't you feel it was out of character or did content matter more to deceive a few women and make them feel like they all stand a chance with you? Hmm. I'd say that was out of character, to be quite honest. Because out here, I don't even move like that. Mm. I'm moving like perfect singularity, work towards my goals or whatever case may be. And if I do have like a relationship, I actually on it. So yeah, out of character, I'd say.
I'll push you further. Push me further. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> There's also been talks about uh, things that people either saw at night mm. or that people didn't, um, or people spoke about either yeah. in their diary sessions, other housemate contestants, um, that you did things with people of the same sex as well in the house. <laughs> oh, like what? You <laughs> things. <laughs> I don't know. Not that I recall of. No. No, that you recall of. Nah. Not that I recall of. Um, why would a, a, a person, especially the people involved, why would they do that to you and allow the rumor to perpetuate? Uh, to be quite honest, like, it's a content thing for everybody. Okay. It's always, also, like, when I gradually, when we all got out the house, like, you hear stories about you, like, I heard, like, I was, like, from, like, a rich family, to, like, the, the gender that, that was pushed out, I heard, like, I like, two degrees i'm like yo what the hell is going on you know what I'm saying? like yeah I, I heard like so much like that's when i realized that like you shouldn't believe everything like okay here on the internet so like i don't even know like how to yeah there's a lot that like people say that like actually shocks us like yo okay yeah, yeah, this is crazy yeah but yeah that's that's when i learned that like nah the internet is like a crazy place mm -hmm. it's only you're only there like the only thing i want to do on the internet is make money from it and then detach. I get that. Mm. There's been a lot of... Um, also, one more about this because yeah, no. there's more to you than, than the show. Mm. Um, how have you been able to move forward with all of the ladies who you were on the polyamorous relationship with on the mm. show? Are you in healthy relationships with them? Mm. Um, or was the show the show and after day 72, it's done, guys. Let's move on with life. Now, like, healthy spaces, like, most of them, as a gentleman, it's imperative that, like, you let them know, like, yo, check in or whatever case may be. And then if they choose to not, like, maintain the friendship or whatever case may be, that's on them. But all of my relationships, either or, like, or the woman, perfect, like, yeah, yeah, healthy. Like, no hate, no, none of that. No animosity. Nothing. Like, I want them to win gradually. I pray <laughs> for them. And, like, may they be abundant in their spaces. Sure. So sure. that's the kind of guy I am. Yeah, it's it's interesting because um, I I I don't know what the psychological mindset that happens when uh, because we as viewers get, are, are able to observe when a person changes, mm. and would you agree with me that there are people who were other characters in the house and you're watching them now because they've got so much fame they've mm. changed. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> yes. Ne? Yes, it does happen to like, you know, like most of us. But at the same time, like gradually, the people that are doing well, I tell you that like the people that are doing well, actually, they've remained like the beautiful people they were in the house. Mm -hmm. And it was all like, it's all good. That's why they do so well, because they maintain self, because that's important. But um, others, not so much. It's others, I don't take a liking to simply because like, you know, it's just... Maybe some people just didn't communicate further than the house. Yeah. And, man, like... But there was, like, I discovered Yolanda, like, in the house, we had, like, a whole beef, you know what I'm saying? Outside the house, we are so lovely. Man, like, that's, like, an older sister to me. She serves as, like, you know, the external voice that you need to, like... Wow. You, you know, here, like, if you gradually moving into something, if you gradually doing this, Abu Sinai also keep them like as brothers we are so like tight it's like it's a good space we keep we keep each other like going the sweet message is like yo bro i got this going on okay do this if one can't handle this situation we pass all the opportunity to the next person so sure, that's sure, exactly sure. how it is that's beautiful and interesting that uh, a person like yolanda you'd say yeah. she's a voice of reasoning she's an mm. older sister that you can listen to that you can call and mm. and and seek advice from mm. um because what we saw in, uh, on, on television mm. was you were antagonizing her. You were part of the people that were antagonizing <laughs> her, not knowing that yeah. you were losing your shot at the money because everybody loved her. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Because you guys don't know anything that's happening outside. Um, she was really a fan favorite. I'm, I'm sure you realized it when yeah. you left that They're like, Yo, they she would have won. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. That's the crazy part. That's she would have like, won. Damn. But ah, Yolanda's such a beautiful spirit, man. She's loud, but mm -hmm. she's... Yo, nah, she she plays like a huge role in our lives, like in like all of our lives, most of our lives. Yeah. Really key. She's yeah. She, I'm not expressing, man. She's good vibes. Like what what a lot of people actually have kept in contact with. They are so beautiful. Like 
this is the like I'm grateful that we had the experiences that we did in the house because mm-hmm. now outside we we learn to like purge and be ourselves. I hear you. To like have respect, have, have respect. boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly that. Yeah, it's exactly that, my brother. It's interesting that that has happened in this season because it doesn't look like it's happening in the others. Never has happened. This is it the does first. not it look doesn't. like any of these people speak to each other from other seasons. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, it's like one or two will keep contact. Three, four. That's a, that's 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 the max of it. Yeah. But other than that, like we're the first season to actually like have a whole group chat where we all in and we all just like memes or whatever case may be. Like mm. we we understood like what we did in the house stays in the house. Now it's time to work towards like our our dreams. Individual yeah, dreams yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. And even if like, you know, they are individual dreams, if someone else can help, like oh Papa Go Papa Ghost is like one of the most generous dudes of I didn't know that, but in the mm-hmm. house, like villain, yeah, <laughs> he was part of the villains. Yeah. So in the house, you don't know what to think of him, but out here, he's the kind of dude to be like, nah, I can't really make that like a uh, gig or whatever case may be. Like, just ask your read if you can. That's the kind of dude he is. Very sure. generous, and yeah, like you start to learn that about like different people out here, and then, like it's like they are so beautiful and like yeah. But it's, <laughs> in the house, I wouldn't have said this. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 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 <laughs> Um, uh, are you not being harsh though on those who perhaps are from other seasons or the ones that you're not necessarily uh, in communication with mm. that remember that with Big Brother, all 20 of you have a desire to leave the house and do well and be successful. Mm. But there's about 10 whom we've forgotten, mm. that the audience has forgotten, mm. that are not getting followers, they're not getting mm. bookings, they're not mm. getting gigs. That person needs food on their table. Are you not being harsh on them by saying, ah, they, 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 they've they excluded themselves. They're not talking to us. It's hard to watch people who did what you did win and you're not. Looking at my brother, I, you know, the questions you ask me are very good. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I always try to approach them in such a humble manner. But there isn't anything in life you have attained that you haven't fought for. Oof. So I can only do so much for the next person. Yeah. I can, you can try and tell them like, yo man, or hey, come through for that or whatever case may be. But life's about who wants it like the most. Mm -hmm. That's the truth about it. As much as everything's all like, they might, might've been forgotten or anything like that. Like, that's why I tell you, I understood why other people were doing things to stay relevant. They were fighting for that chance to be in the bookings, the gigs, okay. stored. and if you didn't do that, I mean, we like we have Mitch who left in week six. Mm-hmm. We have Trenza left at week six. They are doing outstandingly well, mm-hmm. but no one like knows the truth about. They fought for these opportunities. Proposed like Trenza showed me a like you know something a spreadsheet that he worked on, which he was declined the first attempt. He went gradually back to those you know the charts, fixed it up did what he had to, pitched it again to the same people. Mm-hmm. And he said, yes, it's about how you go out and fight for yeah. your thing, yeah. to be honest. Um, interesting interesting that you mentioned that, that yeah. sometimes people will dwell mm. in their pain, in their mm. failure, but they didn't put in the work. They didn't. And that's the problem mm. with people. Like, Your pain is not meant to consume you. People have a misrepresentation of what pain truly stands for. Well, for me, when I look at pain, as I've expressed, these are lessons, not even just a lesson. Pain is there to fuel you in so many ways to say, I don't want to go through that again. Hmm. You know, you're supposed to understand your pain and say, okay, I know this feeling, it's messed up, but yeah, it's a pain. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly how you need to look at pain. But people just get in a depressive state, they they cocoon themselves to the point where they really lose their potential. They lose self. They lose anything like that used to drive them before. Yeah. Pain is not there to, to kill you. Yeah. Pain is not there to... It's there to refine. Exactly. It's yeah. there to polish you. you know? Yeah. It's there. It's like, yeah, exactly. Sometimes that. difficult to bear. It is. Yeah. But trust me, once you bear it, like no one feels pain every day, all day for the rest of their lives. Mm-hmm. Unless that is your choice. But if you're already in pain, do things that get you out of pain. It's like people complicate life in so many ways, but it's a simple. It's a simple formula. If you respect life, it'll, it'll tenfold respect you back. 
the ethos of this show is 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 is, is growth and mm. igniting people's inner power so that it externalizes and it it it, it they actually practically implement mm. those decisions um in a manner that uh maintains principles i want to go back to when we started our conversation we spoke about um many opportunities mm. where you could have lost all your principles mm. in order to gain access mm. to a certain opportunity what's the most bizarre thing that you've been requested so far in the industry ever since you left the house in order to gain access into an opportunity it was a check like a check from Oh, I hear. Let me know. <laughs> no, don't say it. no, please. <laughs> don't say who, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like a, it was a big check to to go on a on a lunch. But I was like, you know, nah, like I like I'm chilling. Like not even a lunch. It was like a big check. This guy like offered um you know, a large sum mm -hmm. of money on the via like you know a DMs, and he said, uh, "What's his reply?" He says, "This is how much you'd make if you respond to my DM." Hmm. And I was like, nah. Now nah, okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, yeah. And that, like, but at the same time, it's like <clears throat> I don't hold dear sentiment to money like that. That's okay. another thing. Like, money is not like money can be made effortlessly. Mm. There's like it's money is like there's a formula to making money, bro. Like, I don't even know like how to express it. Like, you just <laughs> value is what brings it more than anything. So, to me, I didn't really, I wasn't desperate for. The check or anything like that and that's another thing i like to to preach to people that are like yo don't need to be so desperate to take whatever like people are throwing at you number one rule is like never say yes to the first opportunity that comes to you analyze the situation no matter how you know don't be too quick to jump into it someone out there has made the mistake of taking the money mm. responding to the dm mm. and they're tired of being in that situation because mm. it comes with sexual favors that you don't agree with yeah. it comes with molestation mm. abuse um being dominated by people mm. who you would have never given access to in your life it comes with being disrespected a whole lot of mm. connotations that it comes with um they want to come out why must i come out and as you're saying but i'm scared to lose all this money who will i be outside of this money because i now have a large instagram where i'm living large mm. um why should i come out why should he come out? Number one, like everything you've attained, you are going to lose it either way. You're going to die someday. So gradually, we get to keep nothing from this earth. That's always been my formula. That's why maybe I don't worship money the way people do. Yeah, yes, yeah. there's a need for it. Yeah, It is, it is important to make it. Mm -hmm. But trust me, to, to gradually have a lot of it, knowing that it came in a rightful manner, mm -hmm. is the most easiest, like, you know, way to deal with money or to have it or there's no demons attached to it there's no hmm. darkness attached to like imali hmm. and valid like if there's a darkness attached to money it won't last because i mean you didn't do the groundwork of yeah 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 of learning yeah. how to maintain it yeah that's why being broke is the best season like people could ever be in because the little that you get learn how to utilize that to make more mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the financial education that people mm -hmm. don't know about mm -hmm. People look at being broke like, yo, now I'm bummy. I can't do this. I can't do that. No, bro. Relax. You're in a season. Learn how to gradually gravitate towards the money. Learn how it works. And then from there, once you make that big check that you really be put, like dreaming of or whatever case, maybe it's easy to sustain that. That's what being broke is for. Would you say then the reason you're able to think like this and stick to these principles is because your identity is not connected to how much is in your bank account? Yeah, I could ne? say. Most definitely, yes. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of people make that mistake where mm. they believe who they are, especially as men. Mm. We must not lie. Mm. As men, a lot of men mm. believe that I can access that woman, that opportunity yeah. because I've got this much money. Mm. Mm, now that is that is true <laughs> yeah because like hey the narrative has changed with us 21st century like you know individuals mm. like money is the number one factor yeah once you don't have it you're not respected mm. and that's how women go about the, that that agenda and not that must or mm. like there's so many there's so much going out here like that like i'm like yo people are, are doing this wrong yeah like we're living wrong we're living backwards in so many ways and <laughs> It's just hard to, <laughs> I think we're too far for a fix at this point because hmm. it's gradually either going to get worse 
or it doesn't get better. It just continues like this. But money has by far surpassed any principles, anything like that. Because a woman that loves you can look at you today and love you. But if you don't have the means to maintain, you know, the lifestyle, she'll get it other, like, you know, in other ways. Mm. So, yeah, we do face, as men, we, we face a, a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you lost women? Yeah, of course, man. Like because of that. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of times, man. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, th those are the best moments of my life. Because that's where I started learning that, like, I can't compete with someone that's 45, bro. As a 20-year-old. I can't compete with someone that's like this. So, you know what I'm saying? They have years and reach. They've had groundworks. They, them two, I, I, I bet you it's, it's just a continuous cycle. They too have probably lost women to Amakhrod Man Amang. It's just a cycle that continues. So me, I was like, nah, I can't compete with someone that's 35, bro. Like, you can see he, there's, there's a lot of work behind like, oh, dude, and now Melancholy yeah. Lintombiam because she left me. Nah, it's all good. If that's what she wants, she can. But chances are, if a man is smart enough to make that increment or amount of money, he knows the, like what he's using you for. If he's smart enough to throw 10K away, man, that's a 13th of what he has in his account that he really... I don't know how to put this. Maybe I'm going all over the place. But what I'm trying to say is <laughs> you, can't, you can't beat the system if my door and you're trying to get like you know buy financially or whatever case may be it's gonna end at some point because men who have money only gradually give it to the wives that they're cheating on or whatever because they're the ones that built the whole thing with them if they were there on yeah, the journey. yeah yeah but if you just come and meet a man with money and think he's gonna take care of you you're lost because there's there's nothing else he can see within you besides the sexual flavors he might be thinking of or besides the youth that he wants to suck out of you hmm huh. But other than that, you're just moving backwards. As in Tombi, like, that's the, another thing that, like, you know, I try to preach to my little sister. That, like, I'm, I'm tied with her. So I, as she's growing up and becoming a woman, she's now 18. She's mm. learning how to feel for boys and that, you know what I'm saying? But I always tell her, like, just because, like, you, you could either be with someone that's that has a good work ethic but doesn't have it done. That's perfect because that's the kind of dude that will honor you when he does. Mm. So, yeah, <laughs> it's 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 interesting you say that because going back to <clears throat> money not being your identity, yeah. you've been able to remove who you are at the core with how much money you have in your bank account. Mm. And if you right now at twenty four are dating somebody who's twenty four, mm. but they are in a relationship with somebody who's fifty four. Mm. Um, they are definitely identifying with money yeah. most of the time. Not all. They have. There are an anomalies, and I'm saying that because they are negating all your good qualities, mm. jeopardizing your relationship that mm. you have built together because they want a certain bag, mm. they want to drive a certain car, they want to live in a certain apartment in a certain location. So, as you're saying, this person doesn't realize that their identity mm. is compromised mm. by being with the person who actually doesn't want them. You, yeah. There is just a side. Yeah. This person doesn't see them as means to uh, building a family, Fine. building a home, companionship. Yeah. Yeah. That is actually, you put it, yeah. you put it in such a, a right manner. They have, like, they really make money the all in all go-to. But, Malia <laughs> Pela. <laughs> like, people don't understand that. Yeah. As much as you can make it. But anybody that has to, if you haven't learned how to make money, there's no point in going and jumping into an opportunity that's like, like, you know, for money. Because it's, you're going to have a temper and it hurts worse when you had it before. <laughs> yeah, and, and you lived you, it. <laughs> you lived it. And then you lose it. Yeah. It hurts more than someone that's gradually, you know, trying to work towards it. And then they attend, like, yeah. there's like, it's like, for me, there's no reason for me, like, right now at 24, to earn over, like, Two million or whatever case may be. It's not because of like limitations or whatever case may be, but what value do I have in me? English till two million or the three, you know what I'm saying? Or like I, I see like these 20 year olds posting up on like socials or whatever case. Yeah. Be. That's another thing I also learned getting into the industry because like there's some influencers who would be like, like on, on the, on the, huh, ish, I don't want to associate. Maybe people can gradually. <laughs> so maybe I, let me, I, so the person. Yeah. Um, 
this cause on the YouTube, yo. Mm-hmm. Like this is like this mm-hmm. cause, bro. Go to uh, the conversation is mom, I need that car. Mom, I need to I need to shoot that video, ma. You don't hmm. understand how much I need that car. Hmm. But what they sell you is hey guys. They all mine, to, I bought them. Welcome to the year. That's what I learned. I was like, oh, okay, snap. Yeah. That's when I started like realizing that like nah. There's no point in doing all that stuff. Rather gradually work hard, get it, Ibeyako. Then you're good. You have it forever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, 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 I fully agree with you. You're saying I'm 24. Mm-hmm. You made an example of 2 million rand, for example. Yeah. I, I'm guessing you just, it's the, it's the quickest example you could think of. Mm. I, 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 so I, I, I drive a, a particular luxury car, yeah. right? Um, I'm 30. As you're saying, I've, I've put in the work. Put in the work, bro. And I was sitting at the dealership for service. Yeah. Um, and there's this older guy, mm. probably seven years older than me. Mm. Um, and we're just speaking, you know, a conversation, conversation. about cars yeah, yeah. and everything. And he says to me, why, what's going on, especially with the black community, with this obsession with 21-year-olds wanting to drive a Porsche, for yeah. example? He was saying, you know, I had no desire at that age for a Porsche. I looked at it as mm. people who have worked hard, who've mm. earned certain things, mm. who've gotten certain titles in their lives, who've struggled who've pushed yeah. with blood sweat and tears and then they eventually reward themselves mm. with such things what's going on now where a person is 21 and they want to drive a porsche and a range rover you see you see like what what is it in you that a porsche serves at 21 exactly like at 21 you still have a lot to learn at 21 you st- yeah <laughs> i don't even know how to describe 21 should be a, a, yeah <laughs> I don't even know. It's, it should be those learning curves of like falling in love, falling out of love. Yeah. Figuring yeah, out yeah. like, you know, what's, if you're an academic, yeah. you're going to like figure out you have different challenges as compared to Leama Porsche or like focusing on. Absolutely. Don't focus on the ears. Or like everything comes. You just need yeah. to. I always looked at it like inner world and outer world. So your outer world is like the material and everything like that. But what you do in the inner works. Yes, you already have it. If you declare it, it's yours. Mm-hmm. It's right here. But the correspondence needs to meet you. And that gap between is time and your experience and what you need to go through in order for you to match up to it. So you already have it. Just do the things you need to do to gradually maintain, like get to that level. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And people don't look at it like that. Maybe like 21 year old see internet drives us mm. more than anything. Mm. Like it drives a perspective and a narrative. So that's why I do my best. If I'm on the internet, I just post up what I need to post up. Yeah. Thank the people that support me, that love me, or whatever case may be like send memes to friends or whatever case may be but the algorithm i stay away from that because like you see things yeah that yeah. make you feel like oh man i'm, I'm, I'm unworthy doing, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not doing, doing enough. enough i know i'm doing a lot more yeah. you know what I'm saying? that's yeah. that's the contentment that i started having and like you know sure sometimes it's okay to feel like you're not doing enough mm-hmm. because chances are you might not but other times it's just like now nah, what you just saw is actually putting you in that space you don't know what's going on in like bro's life that you know He's posting these accolades. Yeah. So, yeah. We're nearing the end of our conversation. We've got uh, a tradition okay. of one of our favorite things to ask right. as we end our conversation. Let's get it. Um, what's that one thing you know for sure? For me? Mm. Like success is indefinite. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Most definitely. I've always known that as a kid. Never had to question myself where... Never had to like worry about it or whatever case may be. I always knew I'd be here. I'd always knew I'd be on TV screen. I always knew I'd be controversial. Yeah. I always knew <laughs> that's who I am. Yeah. And that's gradually what I'll continue to be. Mm-hmm. Someone that's always going to gradually push through success. And success has many forms for me. So yeah, that's the one thing I know. But what's the one thing you know? I'm, the one thing I know is that God s- surpasses human understanding completely yeah. because the more i operate in my calling what this is one of the things that are part of my calling mm. is that life becomes clearer mm. and uh, my journey with god has also shown me that faith is like even when it doesn't feel clear it's clear, yeah, it's clear. I, I don't know if that makes sense it does <laughs> when it doesn't feel clear yeah doesn't mean it isn't clear. Exactly so I wake up with so much contentment mm. and, and freedom in how I exercise who I am. Mm. Um, I, I'm loving where I am. I'm turning 30 n- next month. Hey, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, let's get it. I truly, 
and so, one of the happiest places of my life. Yeah. And I'm like, geez, the funny thing is when you're with God, it's still going to get better. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the truth about it. Yeah. People don't get it. Look at how smart we are. Yeah. That's true. It's it, still it, going to get better. It, is, it gets better and better. It that's, just keeps getting better. That's what people fail to understand though. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So like, that's why you can only tell them so much, bro. But if they're going to choose, like we saying the same thing and we understand yeah. the formula of life, but like, it's all good, bro. You yeah. can't further explain it to someone or force that agenda to someone else that doesn't want to see it. Sure, sure. So, yeah. Mr. Vanilla, thank you for your time. Thank you, my it's brother. been a privilege. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. I did. Yo, it's I not your this. ordinary yeah, yeah, I love conversation. This one. Nah, this one I loved, yo. Yeah, yeah. Nah, this one is deep. Deep. Yeah, this one is deep. We, we tried to be deep. <laughs> yeah, this one is deep. Nah, it actually dissected me. Yeah. Nah, nah I'm with this. Nah, this is, this is it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, man. Nah, thank you very and much. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.